Gamers. I hope you're all well. Another instalment tonight, and what you see in the vice is a lethal little nymph that I use on the still waters where I fish in the UK. Again, like the last one I tied, um, for a video it can be fished under the bung, it can be fished as a point fly straight line nymphing, uh, and in the really cold months it can be fished as a single fly down deep. Um, for some reason the fish really love it. It could well be due to the bling. So, what we have in the vise is a Togan's Scud Hook, size 12, and on the front of that is a 3.2mm silver bead. The tail is just white polypropylene yarn. Um, I find that one strand of that is slightly too thick for the tail. So I'll um, cut a bit off and then split it in half, two thirds, um, and that gives me the tail that I like the look of. Uh, but again, it, I guess it's, it's down to you. The rib, blue wire, I'm using Hens, and it is 0.18. Um, the body is uh, wide Perlurex. Um, you can use medium if you want, you're just going to be wrapping the body for longer, so wide is better because it makes it quicker. Uh, and then the thorax is a mixture of um, glister dubbing, I call that blue, apparently it's purple. Um, so it's a mixture of that and a mixture of vicuna dubbing natural hare's ear sub. Um, and what that does is it provides natural bugginess and takes some of the shine out of that glister dub, which is really important, uh, just not too over the top. Uh, and the thread is going to be white. Um, you can color, you can change the thread up if you do red or you do black or you do green. The body's going to change shade because um, that pearl lurex is sort of semi see through, um, and uh, you can sort of mix it up for the waters that you fish. This is a size 12, partly so that you guys can see it on the video, and also because that's what I fish in the lakes where I live. Um, I tie it on size 16 jig hooks for the river. Uh, you can go as small or as large as you need to. Again, the choice is yours, it's your fly. So let's kick on and get tying. Um, as I said, uh, Togan's scud hook with a 3.2mm bead. So we're going to get that secured in the jaws of the tying vise, just like that. There you go. Um, and catch on the thread behind the bead. <clears throat> And then take the thread all the way well into the bend. There we go, that'll do. Um, and then snip off the excess thread. Not needed on this pattern. Uh, I always like to do one wrap after I've done that snip. It's not necessary in this uh, pattern because you're tying in a tail. Um, anyway, here's my tailing material. As I say, I've um, I've stripped out a third of that of that polypropylene yarn just to pull it pull it down make it a bit thinner um, make the proportions a bit better as far as I'm concerned and then uh, I'm going to wrap this all the way back up to behind the bead probably should have gone down the hook instead of up the hook but never mind and what you want to really concentrate on when you're doing this is getting a even coverage of thread on your um, poly yarn. Um, we'll cut that tail off in a bit. Um, because we are using, um, what are we using? Pearl Lurex for the body. Uh, we want as smooth an underbody as possible so that there are no lumps and bumps and you get a lovely sheen to the Lurex. Next up, I'm tying in the rib. Uh, as I say it's that blue wire, so I'm just going to tie it in at the head. So what I like to do is is wedge it into behind the bead. If I can do that, there we go. It secures the bead a little bit, and it means that the thread stays in a, a sort of semi semi the same place as you wrap down the body with the thread. So just take that all the way down to where we tied off the tail 
and then I'm going to come back up again. And what we want to do now is build a bit of a taper. So we're going to do the standard down a quarter of the way, back up, down halfway, whoopsie, there we go, down halfway, back up, down a quarter of the way, back up, down a little bit, back up. And that's your taper done really, that's um, that's going to come out real nice. And what I'd like to do now is just flatten the thread. Uh, this is a Vivus, so I just let the bobbin spin under its own weight. And then I'll go back down all the way again. And just by flattening that thread, it'll fill in any lumps and bumps and just give us the opportunity of having as smooth an underbody as possible. When you're at the bottom, just run your fingers along the thread and let the bobbin unwind the thread again. And then we're going all the way back to the top. And what we have now, to be fair, you could rib that and fish it as it is, it's lovely. Very maggoty. Okay, that's it, job done. Next up, we're tying in the Pearl Lorex. Slippery stuff this, um, so be a bit careful how you do it. As I said in my last video, I like to leave big fat tag ends because they're much easier to tie off. So um, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to catch this stuff on when I'm doing the thorax and give that a bit of a tug. Again, we're going to cover the thorax with dubbing so it hides a multitude of sins dubbing, doesn't it? Um, and now we're going to take this down and back up again um, and make sure you, you don't pull it too tight because you'll stretch it and it will change colour and consistency but you want it to be taut um, just so that you don't get any lumps and bumps as you see one there just give it a wiggle and it kind of beds itself down and we'll do that, we'll do one more there we go around the tail area very good and then give it a wiggle a wiggly back up we come Again, there's a little bump there. Mind the point of the hook, these tokens hooks are really sharp. I'm going to take this all the way up, but you don't have to because you're going to dub the thorax, but may as well use the material. And then a couple of wraps behind, a couple of locking wraps in front. I like to do a few more wraps behind because this is slippery stuff. And what we don't want is it all coming undone. And then, because it's wide, if you give it a tug, you can nick the end and pull the rest off, and it makes it slightly, uh, a slightly neater tie off. Okay, so I'm just going to tilt that slightly. Um, rib, opposite way to the way you did the Lurex, but it's not too much of a problem if you don't. I like to do two turns at the bottom and then we'll go up in open turns. If you've got a rotary vise just tilt the, tilt the vise slightly so that you can make sure you get nice even spacing between your ribbing because it's important. Not sure the fish care but certainly my OCD goes into overdrive if I don't get the ribbing exactly even between each one. And you've got to take a bit of time on this because as I said that Lorex is slippery and it's slippery for the tinsel for the Lorex and it's slippery for the wire. So we're going there a couple of times and then we're going to tie that wire off. And I like to build up behind the bead a little bit. It just stabilises it because I didn't bed it down with a layer of thread. Keep tension on your bobbin and helicopter the wire off. And that's it. Again, you could fish that as it is. It, it looks fine. But I've um, I've got my thorax. I've pre-blended. Uh, so you can see here, you can see the glint in it. It's delightful. 
um, and you can see the bugginess of the hairs in the sub as well, um, which is really, really great. It makes the glister dubbing significantly easier to, uh, to dub. So we're just going to slowly work that onto our thread. Probably don't need much. If the white thread throw shows through the dubbing, doesn't matter. Um, we've used more dubbing than we need, so um, like everybody does, isn't that? That's the rule with dubbing, isn't it? Use more than you need. Um, and then we're just going to behind the bead. Oopsie. Okay, not behind the bead. And then you build up a thorax that you like. Again, as I always say, this is your fly to fish with. If you don't like how it's sitting, undo it. Tighten up the dubbing a bit. I quite like that. I think I'm good with that one. Maybe one more tight turn behind the bead just to bed it down. And then pull off the excess. And pulling off the excess with this um, glister dubbing is slightly easier said than done. So uh, don't be afraid to snip it off right up behind, under the bead. But be sure to tilt your vise so that you don't then snip the thread. Because then, if you do that, you are going to be grumpy. Okay, um, just going to adjust that slightly for the whip finish so we don't slip off the front. Um, and what I like to do here is just get a brown sharpie marker and colour up. I don't know, not very much. And not too dark either just so that when we are doing the whip finish uh, any thread showing is going to be brown not white uh, one two three i used all of that so we'll do the same amount again if you want to varnish or you know uv resin your thread knock yourself out i tend not to i just like ugh, whip finishes eh? who'd use them I like two whip finishes um, just to seat the knot well. One, two, three. And then snip off the thread. And the one last thing to do, trim your tail. Again, it doesn't need to be big. Just the hint of a tail or something. And that's it. That is the hare's ear blue assassin, or the blue hare's ears assassin. You call it what you want, I call it Fred. Um, it fishes really well for me, um, so please try it. Try different coloured threads under the pearl lorex. Try different colour glister and different colours hare's ear sub from Vicuna in the thorax. See where you go with it. <clears throat> please let me know on Instagram how you get on, what colours you're doing, and what name you give your fly. And I will see you next time. Thanks very much.